Bowl, South Carolina. Division One AA playoffs at Paladin Stadium. I'm Chuck Hushin, along with Gordon Higgins. Eight games being played around the nation today as the first round of the playoffs will pare it down to eight next week. The semifinals will roll around the week after, and then the championship game will take place in Chattanooga, Tennessee on December 16th. That's a Friday as the two survivors go to Chattanooga to decide the one double right, championship. Of course, Nichols State, one of the hottest teams in one double A football right now. They've won five straight games coming into this one, and uh, it's uh, almost on the selection process, and you chaired it last weekend, but who's hot? What have you done for me lately? Those are uh, the teams Nichols, that get yeah, in. They overcame so much this year to get here. They had the hurricane that came through. They had two games they had to cancel and not play, and they win the automatic qualifier out of the Southland Conference. Yeah, you got to hand it to Nichols State in Thibodeau, Louisiana. They suffered the effects, first of all, of Hurricane Katrina, and then Hurricane Rita came through. And uh, as you said, they lost uh, one game with each hurricane. That left them with only nine games to play. They were one and three. They win the final five games of the season. They beat McNeese State last Saturday to win their first conference championship ever. Just a tremendous accomplishment. Very much so. To be you here. Know, Southland Conference is a tremendous football league. You know, they got Texas State. Uh, that's playing Georgia Southern today. You know, it, it would have been interesting. You got two option teams that one's gone to uh, Texas State to play. The only game Texas State lost was to this Nickel State team. Turn around, you've got uh, Furman who lost against Georgia Southern this year, an option type team. So we kind of just flip flop those opponents. Of course, and, uh, Nickel State's quarterback, Yale Van Oy, he is uh, the Southland Conference Offensive Player of the Year, and uh, he's done a tremendous job all season long. So you can't count his team out either. Absolutely not, and uh, what impresses me about him is his decisions. He makes excellent decisions running the triple option offense. They have three options. They got two excellent fullbacks in Tobias and, and Cole. This is Alex Romero trying a 39-yarder. Romero gets his foot into it, and it's good. So the turnover gives Nickel State three points. They lead the Paladins of Furman here in the first quarter by a 3-0 count. In 2005, UTC head coach John Schultz fumble. He very seldom fumbles a football. Here's Carter. He's going to get knocked down at the 34-yard line for a two-yard loss. Strong safety Tony Edison was waiting on that one. Really good job of Nickel State here, screaming out, bringing out the toss sweep to Carter. And you saw Carter had no help on the corner. Got knocked down for a loss. So Furman not doing anything on offense right now. A fumble and now negative play. Out of the shotgun, Martin going to throw pass incomplete and it's intercepted. Ball went straight up in the air, and the middle linebacker Corey Babala yeah. comes up with it. That's his fourth interception of the year. You see Martin stick it right in here to Steph, his favorite receiver, and got hit from behind the ball, popped straight up in the air, and Babala made the interception. Tony Edison delivered the hit. You can see it again. Great hit by Edison. Step goes upside down, and then Nickel State, their second turnover of the day, and again, they're in great field position inside the Furman this is a big play territory. For him. Hand off on to the fullback, Cole, Cole, and 230 pounds, the sophomore from West Jefferson High School in New Orleans. That ball is right at the marker, Chuck. I think the officials are going to take a long look at it here. Looks like he got it by the nose of the football. He did. First down, Colonel. Furman, a base 4 3 defense. And here's the option. Quick pitch going to the outside. That was Joel Fontano Amadi. Collars. Fontano Amadi. Great job here by Roy Ravenel just pursuing the play. You see his speed on the corner. Can't Fontano can't outrun Ravenel. He just kind of horse collars him. Also, good job by Bray tackling the quarterback. And the Colonels are hoping that time for that toe will have just enough of a crack to get the first down. Meanwhile, Furman's going to try to stand up and turn him away. Van Oy brings his folks to the line of scrimmage. Is the option. Van Oy keeps, and Van Oy picks up the first down on fourth down as he takes it down to the 20. Really good move line. here by. Van Noy, he looks like the fullback was going to be stuffed, so he kept it on the second option. The safety comes over. But first round playoff right. action, the Furman Paladins and Nickel State Colonels meeting for the first time ever. 
As you can see, Nichols State with the lead. There's Cole again. Seven yards to go goes. here. And a handoff onto the fullback into the secondary. He goes down to the six yard line. On the dive play, that's Joseph Tobias. And he's going to give him first and goal at about the six. Watch it again. Most teams you think third and eight definite passing situation, but not with the number two rushing team in the nation. This time they get Tobias just enough of a crack against the middle of that Furman defense. And he first down and goal to go. Nichols State trying to add to their lead. The handoff this time going to Tobias again. He takes it to about the two and a half yards. And off going to the fullback, and he is going to be down inside the one-yard line. Great play by Andrew Becker and Shelton Riley. The two safeties combined to stop Big Tobias six inches from the goal line. Watch it again. What a tremendous job by the Furman defense. You can see it looks like Cole's going to get in the end zone, but you can see the knee clearly come down. This before, watch there, somebody on the back side, Andrew Jones blitzing. Just knocked the knees out from under Broderick Cole. You see the time of possession heavily in favor. Ryan of Pyle, State one of their big defensive ends, makes a stop. Seven seniors starting on defense. For down State. And four, four to Powell. Yeah, Powell, uh, all South End Conference. So right. wipe out the first down. Furman will face third and 14 now. The ball at the nine-yard line, and Martin will go from the shotgun. There's a blitz. Going to throw it underneath. Carter going to get knocked down at about the six, and Furman's going to have to punt from the end zone here on the play. Nathan Stewart was all over Derek Carter. Norman, when you come from the blitz, the screen pass is an excellent call here, but the linebacker, Nate Stewart, unaccounted for, he just came through clean and made the clean tackle on Carter, so Furman gonna have to punt from the Furman University the in zone. Greenville, South Carolina. Three nothing your score. Nichols State leading Furman here late in the first quarter. That 70 yard punt a moment ago by Ingo Martin matches his career high that came when he was at the University of Florida that was a 70 yarder against Ole Miss and the fifth longest in Florida history there's a pass on first down throwing it up and the ball is caught at the 35 yard line going up to make the grab was Michael Akaronko yeah when you say throwing it up that's exactly what Bonoy does here he just throws the ball to up deep and high. It's a jump ball. And Akaronko is 6'4. And the man guarding him, Maurice Duncan, is 5'8. Yep. And Akaronko, the Furman, the best. Furman offense has not had an opportunity to get any rhythm at all going because Nickel State has really dominated. Of course, Furman has the two big turnovers, too, Chuck. And they've got the ball again deep in Furman territory. Second down, six yards to go. And handoff, a broken tackle, and Cole is off to the races, takes it down to the 21-yard line. Football, Frambo, one of his responsibilities, hit on the fullback, and you see the hit there. Freeman also had a decision to make, where you Freeman, the linebacker, 49, got kind of a no-man's lane, though. Didn't know whether to take the fullback. Second down and eight. And a counter play, Hutchinson takes it. Breaks a tackle, takes it across the 10 down the eight yard line. Bounce off somebody right there, point of the Bambro. Bambro got into the secondary and got a big first down. It's goal to go again for Nickel State. It seems like this spent the entire ball game in the shadow of the Furman goal line. Total yardage after that play, 124 for Nickel State to 10 yards. Third down, goal to go, ball at the eight yard line. Van Oy gonna keep turns the corner knocked down at the three yard line watch it again Van Oy really does a good job here of using his body just leaning in it looks like they were gonna hit him at about the five he got leaned forward with that big body of his and got it all the way down to the three but this time Jay Thomas is not really Alex good. Romero makes this field goal uh, 19 yards kick is on the way and it's good Romero his second field goal of the day gives Nichols State a 6 0 lead over Furman. Division 1 AA football playoff back lock here. Might need to call a timeout. Run the option, quick pitch. Carter gets knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Great play that time by the cornerback who came up, and that was Joseph Ogletree. The Carrier free safety actually came up to make the play on Derek Carter, so Ryan Stone is a holder. 
Thomas Slaughter, the snapper. Those two are very good. The kick coming in with some in short. Though, from 23. You see the rushing yardage. Furman has averaged more per play, though, or more per rushing play than Nicholas State has. There's a quarterback, Vanoy. He breaks a tackle, squirts across the 25 out to about the 27. Or William Free. And two for seven on third down. And on the option play, the quick pitch will go to Anthony Harris. He's going to pick up the first down and a lot Stop more out there midfield. Football. They get the quarterback to get the fullback. They don't get the pitch man, and he's just roaming free in the secondary. Got a big first down, and Nickel State moving the six again. They're just dominating the four time of possession. Nickel State Colonels in their first playoff since 1996. At a Thibodeau. Less than nine yards to go. Start a man in motion. Danoy going to throw to the near side. A catch at the 40-yard line. And yeah, it's 40 good for a 40-yarder. Now this one, a possession reception, about 12 yards on a first down. Again, just squatting in front of Maurice Duncan. Okay, catches the ball on his knees, but it keeps the sticks moving. Nickel State. Boy, time of possession for them just keeps piling up. They just keep hogging the football. He will look into the eyes of Yale Danoy, the senior quarterback from Kingsville, Texas. Handoff gone to the and fullback the this time, and yard field goal. Engel Martin, the quarterback. Play action. Pass almost intercepted at 30. Nearly picked Russ off. Here on a crossing pattern after the play fake. Russ is open momentarily, but you see a good recovery by the linebacker who stepped in front. Actually threw it behind Russ a little bit, and that's why the linebacker had a chance to recover and almost made the interception. So Steph is the motion man as he moves over on the left side. There's the play action. And wide open. Wheel route. Justin Steph. Touchdown. Furman. Yeah, no, Furman are mixing the pass on the run, creating that pass on, on the ability to run the football with a little play action. Justin. You get a good look at Scott Beckler. Going to kick the squib up. And then it's fielded on a hop by Boggan, and he gets on the far side. Only Beckler to beat, can't beat him, and he's tackled finally by the 45-yard line. And this time they're going to squib it, and it looks like they've got plenty of time to get guys down there, but uh, good job by Bogan who got through the first wedge, and you can just see nobody there. And Dorch does a good job a of saving the touchdown. Football in Greenville, South Carolina, as Furman leads Nichols State at the break, 7-6. to six. We'll come back with more at halftime right after this. You're watching CSS, your source. Hey, very much so. You know, you've got a small control team in Nickel State who runs that option, wishbone type. And then you've got Furman that's just very versatile. They hit the big play at the end of the uh, second quarter. Uh, who knows what happened in the second half. First half highlights. Furman fumbled the ball on the very first time of possession as, Ke as uh, Jerome Felton fumbled the football. And then it was picked up by Nickel State and returned back down to about the 30-yard line. That was Newton on the recovery, and then a 39-yard field goal by Alex Romero with the first points on the board. This was a big play, this defensive stop at the goal line by the Paladin. Fourth and one, and Andrew Jones with a big tackle. And here's the touchdown pass for Furman. Wide open. Furman has the 7-6 lead. Not many points going on the board, but you got to figure that uh, these two teams uh, are just kind of feeling each other out early. A lot more points will go on the board in the second half. Yeah, Chuck, you can see the halftime stats coming up there. The biggest stat on there is the time of possession stat. Nickel State just a tremendously in time of possession, and Coach Thomas, that's what they wanted to do coming in, keep Furman's offense on the sideline, but Furman offense got on the field, got that two-minute drive going, they got the touchdown, Ingle Martin to Justin Steph, the PAT. And they're of course, up seven to the six. defense for Nickel State, seven seniors starting on this defense. I think they're pretty good. They really are. They uh, they do a good job of pressuring the quarterback. Until Ingle Martin made that throw to Justin Steph, he had really been totally ineffective throwing the football. I think he only had two completions for about maybe less than 20 yards, but uh, you can't keep this guy to wrap fullbacks. And Tobias and, and Cole, we saw them featured in the first half. He also, something we haven't didn't expect that much, but we did think we'd see it some. That's putting the ball in the corner. On the third option, the pitch, they got a big first down on their last drive on the pitch, but uh, he doesn't throw the football that often, but when he does, he's effective. He's had two big completions today, one a 40-yarder. that set up the second, their second half. field goal. Berman with a one-point lead over Nichols State. Handoff Felton. Felton will cross the State 20 to the 19. Right. But he hadn't really been able to get into the secondary. Ryan Pyle, the defensive end, 
makes the stop for Nichols State. Kyle, another senior, 6'2", 250 from Gonzalez, Louisiana. The Southland coach of the year in his second year at Nichols State. Yeah, these guys were picked to finish last in the Southland Conference. Tommy Lee Brown down and shaken up. Joseph Ogletree was over there. Well, listen to this crack, bang. That was Ogletree and Carter. Here it comes again, right at you. Oh, hey, yards hit to go. To hit. In the first hit. quarter, Furman stopped Nickel State in a situation like this, but not this time. Felton to the end zone. Touchdown. That 255-pound fullback down. gets it, it like done. Nonetheless, it's a first down. Goal to go at the one-yard line. We'll see if they get it to Felton again. No, quarterback sneak. Quarterback Engel sneak. Martins. Paladins finally pound it in there. Gets a good push behind his center. Corey Stewart is going to get right behind him, that all-conference center. Just keep pushing. And Jerome Felton gives him a touch behind him. Quarterback for the Colonels of Nickel State. Have not been in the Division I AA playoffs since 1996. And they've got those big, tall receivers, though. As Kenley Horton, 6'2", comes to the bottom of your screen. Austin Holmes on him. They're going to throw it, and the pass is going to be over the head of the intended receiver. And there's a flag. They're going to call it a It's a bad breakdown. And Noy again just kind of throws the ball up, up in the air. And you can see Furman secondary. You see Thacker grab the receiver right there. You see it plain as day. And uh, Andrew just got in bad position. Got bad, got beat at the last minute and going to give Nickel State a big first down at the 15 yard quarter. mark off. First down 10, they put the ball at the 36 yard line after the penalty. And a handoff going to the fullback, Joseph Tobias, and he takes it out across. That was an 11 yard pickup for Joseph Tobias to the 47. First down, 10 yards to go. Run on the counter play. This is Tobias once again. He crosses the 50 yes. down to the 45 yard Nothing line. Nothing is 54 yards, so he's been the most effective runner. About five Nicholas yards State of the conference. You know, normally your backup is not going to be in the conference. But actually, we'll two guys kind of share the load, and they really roll up the yards coming in. They were second in the nation in rushing offense, 300 over 300 up. yards a game. And bounced him backward. There's Tobias again. And he just got tripped up as he crosses the 30. It, but Nickel State moving the football here. Here's the option play. Van Oy will keep run over one tackler. And Backer hangs on, drags him down after about a six-yard yeah, game. This, and he's this, this fullback coming out on the corner. You'll see the safety Thacker come up. It kind of runs through Thacker, but then Thacker still has enough to grab an ankle and bring him down. But still a big yeah, positive game. Wesley Bray. And yeah. we got movement. And we're going to get a free play here. It's thrown to the end zone. Touchdown, Nickel State. They got a free play. Paladins just stood up. Offside on the defense. The penalty's applied. Touchdown. Offsides on Furman, there was no whistle. No whistle. For Yale Van Oy, that's only his second touchdown pass of the year. He's going to run here. Keeps, hit once, twice, and down he goes. I played on it down. Never back for standing there watching. Thinking the play was over. Motion man is Grant Brigham for Furman on second and seven. Six hits, and Carter's in trouble. He's not going to be happy with that play. The counter option play Furman's run very effectively here today. That time, Nickel State all over. And another good block by Kibbett. So you can yeah, watch it for yourself, and you be the judge. These Atlantic 10 officials are right. Nope. Like no turnover, setting up a couple of field goals for Nickel State in the first half. Time of possession still way out in front in the turn of Nickel State. James Madison scored 28 seconds to go. And the end of round tackle back at the 28-yard line. Justin Stepp coming in to make the play was Joseph Ogletree, the free safety, and he would have none of the reverse. Nickel State really had this play just had it deep in as well. So several people out there ready to make the play. If Ogletree doesn't. Ogletree a good tackle right there, and I can step down way behind the line of scrimmage. So Furman up to have a big third down conversion right here to keep this drive. Oh, the third down. Yard line. That was a loss of eight yards on that play. So Martin will go from the shotgun here and run the spread offense. Going to throw for the end zone. Has Brigham out there, and it's incomplete. 
to Graham Brigham. Good coverage that time by the defensive back, Tommy, Tommy Lee Brown. Brown All-conference corner. Nice throw here by Engel Martin. He's going to put it right out there for Brigham for a chance to make the play. It looked like he got a little push right there at the end and actually hit off of Grant Brigham's hands. He had it momentarily, but couldn't come down with it. Last year. So he Older is stone. The snap's not good, and the shift is not going to be good either. Somebody, yeah, somebody got a piece of that one coming. Still hanging on to a 14-12 lead over Nichols State. You're watching CSF. Point in the first half have not seen it. Van Oy will run the option. They quick pitch it out there to Cal Jones. 26. Justin Step. Oh, there he is at 32. Boy, he sure did. He looked like he was going to make a nice return. Somebody came up there, number 22, for Nickel State. Had a seam right there, and look at that tackle by Turn. Turn doesn't make that tackle. Step's probably going to go another. Martin out in Nashville, off. Tennessee. You see his numbers on the back. 44 yards rushing. Good day for him. Going to run the option this time. Pitch. And out of bounds. Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds. Number 22 on the defense. 15 yards. First down. You get to watch this again. He was not in very good pitch relationship there with Engel as he was right on top of him. And there's the tackle out of bounds. Really a good play by Turner uh, playing the option, but then he didn't let go with the whistle. That was a big one. Does he? 15 yarder for personal foul. That's Mays on the carry once again. The 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 Play action, quick pitch. Here's Mays. Outside he goes. Won't make it. First down marker as he gets dropped at the 37. A one yard gain. That was my play. Edison, a strong safety. It really is. When this play comes out of the shoot on the counter option, it looks like he's got something going. But Brad Bell, the tight end for Furman, can't stay with his block. And that lets the strong safety, Tony Edison, come off and make the tackle. So Furman looks like on fourth down, two, they're going to go for it. Go for it on fourth down. Ingle Martin under center. Going to run the option. Pete. And a bad pitch. And it's recovered by Tony Edison. And the ball will go over to Nicholas State. Ingle Martin still down. As he really got popped that time by Chris Turner. Not a good decision. Martin that time. They're lucky here that Nickel State didn't pick this ball up and run it. And he got up in there and made a bad pitch, and Edison came on to it. So ball at the foot. Herman looking to get a stop. There's the option play. Van Oy keeps, and he crosses the 45 out to about the 46 yard line. Today. It's slow to get into this one. It's a big play. Third down, a little more than three yards to go. Hand off going to the fullback, and that's Tobias. He has a first down and more. So Tobias for the day, closing in on 100 yards. Double slot. Van Oy under center. They give it to... Nope, he keeps it. And it's going to be fourth down and about one for Nickel State. They're going to mark it at the 39-yard line. It will be fourth and two. Hail Van Oy, what he's done on the day. Offensive line and they give it off in there to Tobias and he picks up the first down. I think. Touch the nose or miss it. That's my prediction anyway. And about a yard. <laughs> One double A playoff. You have to watch it again here. Give it to the guy who's had the best game so far for them. Goes to Tobias, comes right off, and Andrew Jones jumped over a blocker, knocked him off just enough. You see him jump in the pile right there. He's going to motion Russ and hand it. With Felton again. Felton an off tackle and head for about a big third down and two coming up there. You see Jay Thomas wondering what his options are right now as it's getting late in the ball game. Furman trying to go to 10 and 2 on the year. Nickel State came into this game 6 and 3, winners of five in a row. That's right. Great point. Third down and a couple. Here's Felton. Felton has the first down at the 19-yard line. And we're and Nickel Felton. State now with only one timeout left. Can only stop it. And I think they just said now, Chuck, they've used their last timeout, so Nickel State can't stop the clock again. So Furman just about can milk this thing and go home. Now with a 6-4 record. Furman goes to 10-2. And, and the Paladins will advance to the by their round. third seed in Hampton or Richmond, a game to be played later on today. On the other side, we just showed you Eastern Illinois and Southern Illinois. The winner there gets the winner of the Appalachian State oh, Lafayette game. The oh. score thinking maybe Furman would have dominated this thing, put a lot of points up, but it didn't happen. But Bobby Lamb and the Paladins will take it to survive in advance.
And a lot of credit has to go to defensive coordinator Steve Wilson and his coaches in the defensive package they put together today, knowing that Nickel State was going to run the football and run it a lot. Second leading rushing team in the nation, right behind Georgia Southern. They saw the Georgia Southern tape. They saw Georgia Southern had about 400 yards rushing against Furman. They probably thought they had a good game plan today. But Andrew Jones and company just stepped up time and time again, made big plays when they had to. Because you only get to dress 56 guys in a 1AA game, and that takes a toll on your special teams because you're used to using some second-team, third-team guys. So your first-team guys have to play special teams. And as we mentioned before, the travel starts to be part of the whole process, and the fresher teams usually win down the stretch. Injuries, critical. Yeah, you got to stay winning, healthy. You can wind, you yeah. wind up playing 15, 16 games. 15 years. games, but, you know, that, you know, the only difference is for a bowl game, you're practicing on Saturday Bottom instead of, the of playing hour, the game. Georgia Southern and Texas State. That's Barrett Neely. He counted for a total of 25 touchdowns this season. His Bobcats will take on Georgia Southern in just a few.